Yes, there are thousands in our family. Their work is an integral part of what will be the best picture of the year and of every picture of every year. The award that is about to be given then is a tribute to each and every one of them. The best motion picture is... Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM's 31 Days of Oscar Tribute, where this year we're bringing things full circle by presenting 360 degrees of Oscar. That's 360 movies, all Oscar nominees or winners, including 31 Best Picture winners. Each movie we show has a cast member who also appeared in the movie preceding it. Our previous film, the 1942 musical Yankee Doodle Dandy, featured Walter Houston as James Cagney's father. Up next, we have Houston once again in a movie written and directed by his real-life son, John Houston, from Warner Brothers in 1948. It's the treasure of the Sierra Madre. A former vaudevillian in real life, Walter Houston was well cast in Yankee Doodle Dandy, but even in this stark drama, he manages to throw in a few sweet dance moves. In The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, he plays a member of a team of gold prospectors that also includes Humphrey Bogart and Tim Holt. This scruffy crew's quest for a life-changing payout quickly devolves into a tense psychological drama when it turns out everyone may have a lot more to lose than they have to gain. Walter Houston had made a couple of small, uncredited appearances in two of his son's earlier films, but this was the first time John Houston directed his father in a meaningful role. In the end, that decision paid off in gold. Walter won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his performance, and John won Oscars for writing and directing. That marked the first time a father and son each won Academy Awards in the same year. By the way, take note of the wealthy American in the white suit who Bogart hits up for money near the start of the film. That would be John Huston himself. From 1948, a Best Picture Oscar nominee, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. So Humphrey Bogart, the character we all expected to be the hero, loses it completely and dies. Believe it or not, you just saw the kindler, gentler version of the story. In the book, Bogart's character, Fred C. Dobbs, meets an even more horrific end. He gets decapitated. And writer-director John Huston was absolutely prepared to shoot the end that way. It said he even got a shot of Bogart's head, a fake head. He didn't actually behead Humphrey Bogart. That's a crime, even in Hollywood. Anyway, he shot the fake Bogart head rolling down the embankment into the water hole. No surprise, that scene was not approved. Up next, Tim Holt links us to our next film, the movie that made John Wayne a superstar. Wayne plays a cowboy bent on revenge, but first he has to deliver a baby, fight off Apaches, and fall in love. All in a day's work. <laughs> 